So what are we doing today? We are reviewing for your test and reviewing what I taught you yesterday. There was one kind of question that didn't come up in class, but yet they asked you. I'd like you to draw one of these, please. And I'm going to show you about that one kind. All right, what do you need to know? To be able to write the equation, you'd need to know a few things. Can you tell me what you'd need to know besides just that it looked like this? Yes? The velocity. The velocity. All right. When they threw the ball up, it had a velocity of 12 meters per second. If you're going to write the equation, you now don't have enough. What else do I have to tell you? Yes? The initial height. You're up on a ladder, so this is going to be 10 meters high. It'd be a really big ladder. I guess you're on top of a cherry picker. That's what that's called. Thing that lifts you way up, like to cut tree limbs and stuff. All right. Now, if I tell you those two things, do you have enough to write the equation? Yes, you do. As long as we're on Earth, then the gravitational constant will stay the same. All right. Write your equation. Compare it with the kid next to you. If you have already compared, please raise your hand. If you have already compared with the person next to you. Okay, cool. All right. Catherine, what did you have for your equation? Excellent start, because we're on Earth, and that's gravitational constant, and it's negative because it's an upside-down parabola. Awesome so far. Plus 12t. 12t, and that's the velocity, and then? Plus 10. You are correct. All right, now, from this, can I find how high the ball went? Yes, that's a.k.a. the vertex. Could I also ask you a different question? When did the ball hit the ground? Yes, I could ask you that. And you'd have to use the quadratic formula. Now, the one thing that we didn't talk about yet is what if I said, do you guys agree if this is 10 meters tall, then it's extremely likely that it went to 11 meters, didn't it? And wouldn't it have crossed that 11 meters two different times? So what if I said, when did it hit 11 meters? That's the one kind we didn't talk about. Well, you got to put the 11 somewhere in this equation, and where would it go? Is it the time was 11? No. There's only one other place you could put it. If I said 11 meters, you'd have to put the 11 somewhere, and it would go here. Now that, though, makes some people go, well, then aren't my A, B, and C unchanged? I mean, A is still this, B is still 12, and C is still 10. So how would it even get like reflected in the new equation that you'd solve. You have to get the 11 out of there. Do you get, you always want your equation set equal to zero? So then you'd have to subtract 11 from both sides. Do you get what just happened there? We had the equation and we all of a sudden knew the height. So we stuck it in. Now we're getting it set equal to zero and our equation therefore will change a little bit. Does the velocity change because I threw it up and wanted it to be 11 feet? No, the velocity doesn't change. It's still 12. But effectively, it's like the starting height changed. Now, don't overread that. Just, just know that the, or we're still on Earth and the velocity we threw it is still the same. But now something had to change. Otherwise, we would have never found the time necessary. So now we got to find the quadratic formula is what you use to solve this, right? Okay, everybody use the quadratic formula. Use your calculator. And tons of kids had trouble with this. Oh, wait. There. Why were some kids getting wrong answers on the quiz? 
because they were typing in 2 divided by 3 times 1. Or let's say this was an 11. If you have a big fraction, you know, like, like 2 over 3 times 11, do you get you have to put parentheses here or it will goof up the order of operations? Think about it. If I just said 2 times, no, sorry, 2 divided by 3 times 11, your calculator doesn't know that you wanted that to be like a fraction unless you put parentheses here. A lot of people got wrong answers because of that. And here's the other thing a lot of people did wrong on yesterday's Schoology quiz. They rounded to the wrong spot, and I get it. When they say to round to like the hundredth spot, first of all, you have to know that that means like there. But then people rounded all of their work to the hundredth spot and then got the answer. Don't do that. You ought to leave your answer more accurate than that. So if this is one, two, four, five or something, then you should leave your decimals as long as you can until you get to the final answer. And at the very end of the problem, then you round your answer. Because if you're multiplying this by some other decimal, leave your answers as long as you have, as much info as you have, then only at the very end. At the end, you round to the hundredths place or whatever. Now, that being said, if you were only off by one one hundredth on today's Schoology quiz, and some people already submitted it, I am going to go back and change it so that if you rounded properly, but you rounded too early, I'm going to let that be okay on this Schoology quiz. So I'm going to go back and change the key, and it'll give you a new score. Okay? So, but understand on the test, don't round until the end. If you round in the middle of a problem, you're screwing up your significant figures. And they'll tell you all about sig figs when you get to science. Who has had science where they have sig figs? Raise your hand if that's you. Okay. You'll see it's really intense about, like, how rounding affects your answer. Significant figures. But anyway, for now, just don't round until you get to the very end. Then you round. All right. So back to this problem. What is the quadratic formula again? Okay, x equals negative b, which in this case is negative 12. Some people actually say x equals opposite b because if this number is negative, it helps kids because negative b is the same as opposite b. Negative b, negative 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 144. Minus 4 times A, which is negative 4.9. C, which is negative 1. If you're smart, you're not going to do all of this on a calculator. You're going to do some of it in your head. You can do negative 4.9 doubled. You can do that in your head. And you can do times by negative 1 in your head. But what I'm really not up for is 144 plus, oh wait, no, it's three negatives, minus whatever that is. That's not something I can do in my head super easy. So what is four times 4.9? 19.6. What is 144 minus 19.6? 124.4. Now, I'm asking Siri to do mine, and I'm suspicious that she's rounding this a lot. Like, because I don't feel like, I don't know, there's a chance anyway that it could be rounding to a weird place. So if I end up off a tiny bit, that could be it, because we're not supposed to round until we get to the end. All right, this one's definitely going to go on forever. What is the square root of 124.4? 11.1534. This is the moment where a lot of you messed up. Don't round that to two places. 
you wait till the very end to round. Now, I am smart enough to know, look at my picture, that what I'm finding, I'm gonna get two answers. One's gonna be this negative answer and negative time doesn't make any sense. So I get two answers and I'm gonna rule out the one that is negative at the end. So if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna save time. I'm gonna only do, let me see. I should only have to do one of them. I should either do negative 12 plus it or negative 12 minus it. I think it's the negative 12 minus the 11.1534 all over negative 9.8. I think that'll be the one that'll be positive and therefore right. Although, wouldn't they both be positive? That's weird. Oh, that's right. This isn't the, oh, I forgot. What we're actually solving here is this. We're going to get two answers that are both positive. I forgot. This is when did the ball cross 11 meters? And one of them is going to be like a really small amount of time after we let the ball go. And the other one's going to be a lot, lo a lot later. You know, this is the smaller answer and this is the bigger answer. Now that makes sense to me. I got to get both answers. So I'll start with the plus one and then I'll do the minus one. What's negative 12 plus 11.1534? That's negative 0.8466 over negative 9.8. And again, I'm smart enough to know the negatives cancel, so I'm going to do that. What is 0.8466 divided by 9.8? 0.0. Six, three, and now if I said I want it rounded to two places, that's the moment to round. And is 0 0.08 the right answer? No, 0 0.09 is the right answer. Now, what is that? That is this short number of seconds here. It's less than a second after you let the ball go. Well, think about it. It only has to go up one meter. And you're throwing it at 12 meters per second. It's going to go up really fast to 11, to 11 meters. It just has to go up one meter. All right, so final answer. That is one of your two answers. The other one? What is negative 12 minus 11.1534? That's negative 23.1534 over negative 9.8. I can cancel the negatives in my head. What is 23.1534 divided by 9.8? 2 2.3625. Now's the moment to round. If I'm going to go there, and that's a 2. Yeah, I do not. This number tells me not to round it up. So there's my second answer. So 0 0.09 and... 2.36, that's when it crossed 11 meters. All right, that's the big picture. Question? Uh, I was just wondering, uh, have a pass? Or... Use the bathroom pass? Mm -hmm. Yes, you may, go ahead. All right, so let's talk about your, come back quickly, please, because uh, we got really important stuff to talk about. So you're going to be uh, taking a test tomorrow and I felt like if I just sprung this on you in the review day and took up like a third of the review day, that the test tomorrow would have been a little bit rushed and, and unfair to you. And there's two, there's two groups, just so you know. There is one group of kids that is going to test tomorrow. We're not. I'm decided already that we're gonna, I want to take my time to review really well, and then we're going to test on Thursday. The other advantage of a Thursday test is if you are struggling, you can come in in the morning on Thursday and come in and get some help. Okay, you got a one last morning help time before the actual test on Thursday. Okay, so currently Tuesday, we review uh, today, and this was kind of new, the thing I just showed you, right? So last bit of new, and we start the review. Wednesday, we do more review. Thursday's the big test. Okay, all right. So I want to do another applications question with you. So imagine a world where you went outside 
with your friend. You throw a ball up, and by your rough estimation, you noticed how high the ball went, and you think that from the second that he released it, in one second, the ball had gone up about 10 meters. Was that important to know how fast he threw it? Yes, it was. The next thing is, you estimate that your friend released it at two meters, because they're over their head, they threw it overhand, okay? So they were up over their head when they let it go. So the release height, or the initial height, was two meters. For the stick person here, throwing the ball. They have no torso, that's okay. That height was two meters. Ball goes up. Okay, can you tell me how high the ball went? Everybody give it a shot. You should be able to write the equation for it. Check the equation with the kid next to you before you go do a whole bunch of work on it. And if I were you, I'd sketch it. You don't have to, but it really helps me anyway to like try to figure out what I just asked you. I asked you how high did it go? All right, so you just came back. I appreciate you going quick. Um, I told them that the friend threw the ball up and it went up 10 meters in one second. That was just a way to kind of get a speed. In a real world, like nobody knows exactly how fast they threw the ball, but if you just watched your friend do it, you might go, I think it was about that far in about a second, and you could estimate their speed. Then this was the height off the ground that they were at. You should be able to write the equation for that. Then I want you to tell me how high the ball went. Is anybody going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this? No. That would have been if I asked you for when did the ball hit the ground. That would be different. So right now, it's how high did it go. Pause for a second. Give it your best shot. Okay, these are tough ones. Let's make sure you got the equation right. Y equals negative 4.9 T squared and then plus 10 T and then plus 2. Raise your hand if you're working with the right equation. Okay, cool. Next step, you had to figure out how high it went. That's the vertex. And if I'm thinking that's vertex, I need the X equals negative B over 2A part. Okay? And I would then go negative 10 over 2 times negative 4.9 is negative 9.8. And let the negatives will cancel, of course. What is 10 divided by 9.8? 1.02, raise your hand if you had 1.02, okay, cool. All right, so that was the X. That was the time, though. All you found is the X. You gotta remember, X is time. If you go back to your picture, this is time. You found me the time, that's not the height. So what do you do to get the height? Well, you want the vertex, right? We got the X of the vertex, you stick that in the equation. And I go back to this equation here and I put in a 1.02 here and here. What is 4.9 times 1.02? That's 4.998. Notice me leaving more decimal places than I have to until the end of the problem. What is 10 times 1.02? 10.2 and then plus 2. What is 4.998 plus 10.2 plus 2? 17.198. And then, if we're going to round to two decimal places, is that right? No. no. Oh. Like the T, you didn't square the T for the first one. I didn't square the first. Oh, okay. So this was not 4.998. Thank you very much. Okay, wait a minute, there's an, but, okay, yeah, there's, there's two things wrong with that. You're right. Okay, so let's get that cleaned up. The negative 4.9 times t squared, I should, I was trying to do too much. Negative 4.9 times 1.02 to the second. Okay, what is 1.02 squared? 
and that is 1.0404, and then I'm going to times it by negative 4.9. What is that times negative 4.9? Negative 5.0979. And then I add 10.2. And then I add 2. What is that plus 12.2? 7.102. Now have I got it. Okay. Now it all depends on where you want to round it. I think I had indicated two decimal places, so 7.10. Now, some kids say, Mr. Shiver, should I put in the zero or not? If you want to show that you've given two decimal places, yeah, it'd be best to have the zero there. Is it mathematically the same to have a 7.1? Yes. 7.1 or 7.10. It's just one kind of tells that, hey, I rounded there. That's why I put the zero there. Okay. Whew. Now, what was that? That was the height. Y equaled all that. See? So the y is the height. So the height was 7.1 meters. Now, on a Schoology quiz, you really you don't, you don't have to worry about you know units. But 7.1 is the meters. Whew! This is an intense class. Now, that's the vertex. What's the uh, the actual thing I found? The time to the vertex, because that's how far over it went in time, and then the height that it went. So this point right here tells me two things. This is the time, and this is the height. And this one's in seconds, and this one's in meters. Okay, then we have to do the quadratic formula on this thing. Man, x equals negative b, that's negative 10, plus or minus square root of b squared, which is 100, Minus 4ac. Okay, I want to use the calculator in there. What is 4 times negative 4.9 times 2? Negative 39.2 is what I got. I'm double-checking this now to make sure I have really want to subtract it or do I want to add it. It was negative b squared minus 4ac. And there were two negatives in that, so it's positive. B squared minus 4 times A times C, and the A was negative 4.9, and the C was 2. There were two negatives. That's why I'm adding. What is the square root of 139.2? Negative 10 plus or minus 11.7983. Notice me leaving more room, like more decimal places. All over 2a, I'm doing that in my head enough that I know it's 9.8. a was negative 4.9, so 2 times negative 4.9 gives me the negative 9.8. Now I have to do it twice, or do I? If one of the answers comes out negative, then I don't need that one because that would be the time being negative. Again, in this problem, the way my parabola is written, it would extend down here and there'd be this negative time answer that I don't need. So I don't want the negative answer here. So that means I'm just gonna do the one that's negative 10 minus 11.7983 all over negative 9.8. What is negative 10 minus 11.7983? Negative 21.7983. Notice I didn't try to do it all at once or I knew it would have messed up the order of operations. A lot of you are going to get that wrong on the test because you're going to try to do this all in one thing. You're going to type it all into your calculator and you won't, you'll forget to put these parentheses in. See, if you, if you remember the parentheses, you'd be fine. But what is that divided by negative 9.8? And I am very impressed if you, without my help, came up with 2.22, and it is have a 4 and a 3, but if we're going to round to two decimal places, 2.22. Raise your hand if you had it. I am impressed. That was a hard question. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, so what's that new kind that you just talked about, Mr. Server? All right. Draw one of these again. 
By now you should be able to know it starts off the ground, usually. We had one in the homework that said it was on the ground, which meant the starting height was zero. But they're usually going to be off the ground to start with. Okay. So on this one, let's say I'm going to make you a scenario. You're throwing a baseball up, and uh, you're starting two meters off the ground again. And you know, because you've been timed for your fastball, you're a good baseball pitcher. Okay, so you know that you could do like a 70 mile fastball, 70 mile per hour. You figure that out in meters. What is 70 miles per hour converted to meters? Oh, it doesn't, you can't do that for me. So I'm gonna have to make it up. Act like you're from Europe and you knew your speed in miles per hour, except you knew it in, uh, in meters per second. And you knew that it, you could throw it at 40 meters per second. That's your velocity, that's your speed ball. Now you can write the equation, right? But here's the twist. Your friend says, I bet you can't get it to, uh, I don't know, third, no, I bet you can't get it to 50 meters off the ground. Well, it's possible that you can't. Maybe you aren't gonna be throwing hard enough to get it to 50 meters off the ground. Do you get that the height of 50 is like this, but we don't know if maybe you didn't get it that high. But you can tell from math whether you did. So if this is where 50 meters is, you write your equation and then you go put in 50 for the height. If you get an imaginary solution, that means you didn't get it to 50 meters. If you get a square root of a negative, that means you were wrong. You weren't getting it up to 50 meters. Now, I think that this is going to have an answer. I, I think you actually are strong enough if you're throwing at 40 meters per second. I think you'll go up for a couple seconds, so I think you'll get high enough to get 50 meters. But it's possible that if you got no solution, mm -hmm. that might have meant, oh, you didn't throw it high enough to get to 50 meters. All right, so now I've got my equation. Keenan, can you just tell me the equation you're working with to start with? Um, start with y equals. Yep, that's how we start. And then what do you think we should do? Um, well, I was just going to ask. Can, can we just do the next little part and then you can ask me? Because maybe this will answer your question. So we got 50 meters. You got to put it somewhere. What do you think we should do? Um, you know? Maybe you don't know. Put it as the y? Yes. Because the other one's the time. And 50 meters is definitely not the time. So I guess the 50 has to go here. Then what do you do? Because we got to do the quadratic formula, but if we just leave these unchanged, then all you're finding on the quadratic formula is that, which is not what we want. We want to find these. So we need to change our equation. So, Keenan, next step, and then I'll let you ask a question, I promise. Subtract 50 from both sides. Yep. Okay, now, if you still have a question, go ahead. That's fair. If you wanted to just know if you went up higher than the, the 50, you could find the vertex and prove I got more than 50 or less than 50 or whatever. Okay, I agree. But I need to know what time did you hit 50? When you solve this, and I put y back in there, that was dumb. 50 minus 50 is not y. 50 minus 50 is 0. You should have your equation set to 0, because that's what you do with quadratics. And then you can use the quadratic formula. This is the part where you got to do a bunch of grunt work, type it in a bunch of def decimals. The quadratic formula will solve this. So let's jump to the ending here and start the review process. And then tomorrow we do all the rest of the review.
this is the hardest part of the test. Hakan, can you turn on? Thank you very much. All right, so this is the hardest part of the test. If this was hard for you, I do understand, okay? Mostly it's going to be calculator grunt work. So x equals negative b, which is negative 40, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is, uh, what is that, like 16,000 or something like that? Four, okay, minus 4 times a, which is negative 4.9, times c, which is negative 48, all over 2a, which is negative 9.8. I'm getting good at multiplying that by 2. Uh, oh, I have an extra zero. Thank you. I was just going to ask you guys what the answer is anyway. So what is the answer? Let's jump to the end. There should be two answers. One small, one's big. Er. Because we're finding these two times. All right, yes. Okay, wait a minute. Negative doesn't make sense for a time. So something went wrong there. It could have been what I did. Okay. But look, it shouldn't be negative, right? It should be a positive time, and this should be a positive time. Who has two positive answers? Okay. Afton, would you please tell me what you guys think it is? Did anybody get the same thing, at least within rounding? Okay, sweet. Yay. There we go. Now, if you messed this up, it I would bet money that it got messed up right here because this is the complicated part. There's three negatives. One, easily forget one of them or square it wrong like I did. Or Okay, cool. Now, let's start... Uh, the review process by having you uh, go back to what did we do before all of this quadratic stuff? Mm. All right. So if you end up with B squared minus 4AC on your test, that'll be called something. The discriminant. If you get a discriminant that's negative, what does that mean? No solutions. All right. So here's what I want to do, and I, I have to kind of adjust. You know that teacher came in and we needed to work out some stuff for your next test. So uh, I, I took a minute or two. So here's what your homework is going to be. You're not going to have to complete anything because you're going to officially complete it tomorrow. But if you wait till tomorrow to do the whole thing, it's going to be really long. So if I were you, I'm going to post a worksheet that I haven't posted yet, but I will. It's going to be the worksheet that is going, you're going to have two days to work on it, tonight and tomorrow. Start it, do the stuff that's easy for you, otherwise you're gonna be really mean to later you and you'll have to do it all tomorrow. All right, so look in there at Schoology for a worksheet. I will send out an update to, to remind you if I think of it, I probably will, to remind you to start that worksheet tonight. All right, that's all I got for you for today.